And, and Dr. Armstrong, if we may, we're going to go over to the magic wall. Let's talk a little bit about what happens during a traumatic brain injury so everyone at home can understand how this happens. It's so fascinating because a lot of people don't understand, and Tony's friends abandoned him because they did right. not understand why he was going through these personality changes. So let's just right. walk through, first of all, what happens during a severe traumatic brain injury. When the head moves forward suddenly in an accident and then backwards, the brain, since it's floating or suspended, then bounces back, if you will, and causes what we call a contra coup injury, an injury on the opposite side where, again, the brain floats back and hits against the hard skull, causing damage to the brain cells. And it may just be a mild concussion that you experience, but in some cases, if it's a severe blow to the head, you end up with multiple injuries in the brain. Yes. And what's going on inside the nerve cells? Well, there are 100 billion nerve cells, what we call gray matter in the brain. These nerve cells are connected by axons, these pathways that you see. These axons interconnect the gray cells, and really this is where we live. This is our personality in the, the brain cells. And so these axons are communicating, sending uh, electrical impulses, if you will. Um, and when those impulses or when these axons are injured in a high-speed in incident, as Tony had, then they die off. The brain can't communicate. So all those connections, those memories, they are no longer occurring in the brain. And that's why your personality, your sure. memories can all change. Absolutely. And the brain actually begins to atrophy in those regions? The brain can shrink up. And there's also injury that may not be picked up by MRI or CT scan, where uh, even the cytoskeletal structures, the cell structures are damaged that you can't even see. In Tony's case, we have his MRI scans that will explain to everyone at home why he, he dealt with some of these memory deficits, personality changes. So yes. This is his MRI. This is Tony's MRI. And uh, to, to look at an MRI, let me orient you first. Obviously, here's the eyes up here, the nose. So Tony's looking that way. And uh, one of the best ways to see a problem with an MRI is look at the normal side first. We see nice gray matter over there. The dark areas that are symmetrical are normal. Those are ventricles or fluid. Now we look at normal and we can come across here and clearly see some dark areas here. These darkened areas in the brain are the atrophy that we saw in our animation. This is brain damage. Uh, we may see personality problems, uh, cognitive problems, thinking problems. Uh, there may be things such as uh, rage, aggression, things like that, uh, memory problems, uh, inability to do uh, even normal daily tasks, becoming apathetic, withdrawn. Social cues may be lost. Uh, people can become uh, uh, withdrawn, as perhaps in Tony's case. Tony, you have a question. Yeah, I would just like to add, I don't look like there's anything wrong with me. I, I don't look like I suffered a traumatic brain injury, a severe traumatic brain injury. But what's wrong with society is when they see somebody with a cast or they see somebody in a wheelchair or on crutches, they know that that person has had an injury <clears throat> and is disabled. Me, on the other hand, they don't know. So it kind of goes that whole thing, you can't judge a book by its cover because you don't know what's going on inside this person's... Listen to, listen to this man. That is so well put, Tony. Thank you. So well put. Thank you. And that's the beauty of having MRIs, because we can yeah. show everyone exactly what's going on. And, and the, the takeaway for people who've suffered from brain injuries or their friends or caregivers is that you can never predict what the personality changes are going to be. But if it's a severe enough injury, the one thing you can predict is that there will be changes. Yes. And you have to work with that individual. And in Tony's case, your parents, Al. Unbelievable. And Chris, they are here. Your brother, Joey. If it wasn't for them and the 17 pill cocktail I have to take every single day, <laughs> I would be either dead, in jail, or in a mental facility. Because your friends gave up on you, but your family didn't. And wow. Al, as a father, yeah. what is that like to see your previously healthy, popular son ignored? It was terrible. I mean, it got to the point where, you know, he was on suicide watch. He had a nervous breakdown, and he had to be with us 24 hours a day or be in a hospital. So it was very difficult times. And, and this is why you never give up on a brain injury victim, because as Tony has proven, it takes time, years and years 
to get to a place yes. where you you are an intelligent person and oh, you are offering you. so many things to this world. Tony, keep up all the great work, okay? Thank, thank you for sharing your story.